well, friends. The sketchbook artwork I'm about to show you in this video was probably the most challenging study that I painted into this sketchbook. It goes through a massive ugly stage just because I felt a little too confident that I can pull off dark skin tones without much experience and do that with a new palette that I'm unfamiliar with. And here is the new palette. By the way, it looks gorgeous. It's by Paul Rubens Art and the company sent me this palette to test it out and do a review. The first attempt will be more of a first impression of it because one painting isn't enough for me to be able to tell who I would recommend it for and how it fits my technique. But that ensures the palette at least one more video in which I will review it more properly. So that's coming in the future. There is a long unpacking and real time swatching video on my Patreon. I went through every single shade, carefully unpacked, written down the name of the paint in the order they were placed in the palette and then swatched. The entire painting is actually a real time Patreon paint with me for August and I will link it down below for you if you want to paint along. About the colors included in this 24 color set, most of them were really bright and creamy and the variety of colors was really amazing. But of course there were a few surprises, for example the orange color was a little too red than I would expect and surprisingly Carmine and Magenta had very similar hue. To be precise, Magenta looks more like Carmine and in my other sets is lighter and a little more vibrant and I would replace the Carmine for Elizarin Crimson if I could could because that would help me mix more natural looking skin tones. Uh, both Carmine and Magenta are very pink and Alizarin Crimson is usually more subtle. Another wasted slot in my opinion was that lemon yellow light and cad yellow hue that looked almost identical. They both were very transparent. I like one cool and one warmer yellow in a set and if the set has in addition yellow ochre or a raw sienna which this one does then it's ideal because you have quite a variety to mix all kinds of of different shades. Another surprising shade was the violet included. It is slightly granulating transparent violet shade that has very low tinting strength and the color on the cover didn't quite match what I found in that pan. I was surprised. I expected rich purple shade and I would replace one of those extra yellows for a rich high tinting strength purple. Loved the selection of blues and greens which I found balanced and most of key colors were very strong Strong, which allowed me to even consider jumping straight to dark skin tones. Let's paint a study with this palette now. And just so you know that there are extra resources available, on my Patreon there is entire sketching process in real time, also sketch to download and use for this demo, and scans of my swatches. Made these available for the minimum possible pledge of $1 so that you can support me as a creator without breaking the budget and the higher paint with me tier is available for five dollars a month and that one contains many real-time painting tutorials thank you so much for supporting this channel while the background and flowers in this study took just about one layer to paint to almost completely finish, the skin and the hair was a real challenge. I never painted darker skin tones much and I don't know why, because even visually I find them so much more appealing and interesting than pale skin that is actually not so hard to paint with watercolor. When I paint pale skin, I preserve a lot of the paper white and just gently add in a few shadows. Of course that you can play with coloring and overall hue even when painting pale skin, but going darker allows to use much greater range of hues and tones. But it's challenging also because the nature of watercolor medium is transparent and so it takes a couple of layers to achieve really dark values. So I figured, okay, let's add a lot of different warm colors as a base because everything in this portrait will more or less be part of the shadow anyway. I loved that about the reference photo, which by the way can be found on my Pinterest board linked down below, that those bright flowers jumped at you almost as a focal point for this portrait, while the actual face remained hidden inside the darker values. I found the tonal range of this photo almost surreal and very interesting. Interesting. And here is the mess I created as a result of my hooray style approach. <laughs> 
I was not being very gentle to the paper and it got back at me by not cooperating very well. After my first layer dried, I tried lifting parts of the pigment to reveal highlights and it worked somehow, however patchy result I got on this paper. I do love my Strathmore sketchbook even when it contains pulp paper, so that's a student grade paper and heads down to that paper handling my roughly six layers of paint in this study, but I could really see that I was stretching its limits. Another problem I had with the paints this time was significant fading of the color after it dried. I am quite used to watercolor losing a lot of darkness upon drying, but this was a bit more than what I'm used to. I think more than 50%. But since I only painted one painting with it, please take me with a grain of salt, I really need to use the palette more often to be sure that it was not just my technique, but I did not plan on using so many layers at the start and I ended up using really a lot. I was also trying to shift hues a bit within one wash of paint and mix different colors but after it dried I sort of had the feeling that the hue also got lost a bit. The shift was not very visible. Another thing that I noticed about the paints is that they don't flow as much and color tends to stay in one place and that made me work a little more when blending the edges of the shadows that I was placing to the face. And so I kept adding more and more paint, drying the painting and then adding paint again and still hoping it will work out somehow. I'll tell you, I haven't been nervous during a so-called ugly stage for a nice while, but this time I felt it right underneath my skin. Will this work in the end or not? And if not, then I just messed up a page in my sketchbook. Are you maybe also familiar with those kinds of thoughts? You know, they don't do us any favors because a sketchbook is for experiments and that moment that you start being nervous about the painting not meeting your expectations, that right there is grounds for ruining that and then your mood and then your motivation to practice. I don't like being so nervous during painting process. And so I just took it as part of the learning curve and as a valuable exercise. Eventually I layered up so much paint that the darkness happened for me and I had to use the darkest value possible for the cast shadow below her chin and around her face. If you look at the painting up close there is a patchiness going on that's quite recognizable and in the future I will simply have to figure out how to paint darker skin tones more elegantly and achieve darkness with keeping depth and transparency of the paint obvious also. My skill is isn't there yet, but you have no idea how much this partial failure fired me up for more darker skin tone practice. Next time I want to try using the Paul Rubens palette on my cotton papers, also painting darker skin tones and we'll be able to maybe compare the performance of the paints a little better. And by the way, I did name different aspects of the palette, which I was not too happy about, but I do normally paint with the highest quality Schminky Horadam and Daniel Smith watercolors, which are very pricey. I have to say that overall this palette really looks like a good value. I googled the price and on Amazon it's about 48 euros. This is a set of 24 colors, which means that every pan is worth about 2 euros, which is a great price because the pigmentation of this palette is really great. Just look at how bright and saturated those flowers turned out. The metal box provides extra space for mixing and it's just lovely looking. The only thing that Amazon listing isn't quite accurate about is the lightweightness of it because it is far heavier from other palettes of the same size that I ever owned. But personally, I just don't mind this, this is a detail. I prefer metallic boxes much more than plastic ones. I 
have three pages left on my sketchbook and I hope to finish it by the end of August so that I can give you guys the sketchbook tour in September and it will also serve my goal-oriented mind some happiness from having a project finished in my hands. And I have that Koval sketchbook now to continue using. I painted two studies in it and the cotton paper in it allows me for some more flexibility if I want to go crazy like in this study. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a long day, hard to put sentences together. But if you enjoyed, here is another video in which I use granulation colors to paint a portrait. And I will see you in the new one shortly. Bye.